Well, welcome everybody to Mining for More. I'm Becca Mowry and I'm here with Dina Merchant and we're continuing on in the book of Mark as we're mining through the word of God and the gospel of Mark. And today we find ourselves in Mark chapter two. And so Dina, I'm gonna hand it over to you. We'll jump right in if you wanna pray for us and uh, start us off in the, in the book of Mark chapter two. I would two. love to, let's pray. Lord, we are just so excited about your word. We're excited that you speak to us through your word and Lord, we want to hear from you today. Lord, would you move in our hearts and our minds and help us to have ears that hear, Father God. We ask that you would just speak right now through this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to start in Mark 2, verses 1. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors, there was no more room even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easy to say to, to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat and walk. So I will prove to you that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. And then picking up in verse 13, once again, Jesus went out beside the lake, a large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked, the, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. So, so okay. Dina, as you were reading these first few uh, sections, what really jumped out to you? I always love this story of the friends. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so encouraging. Their faith is so, uh, I just, I just want to be like these friends. Yes. And what I saw, there was a couple of words and I, sometimes I like alliteration. So the words that like all sound have the same beginning sound. And I saw that they were, they were determined mm. to get their friend. Right. And even though they were, they weren't discouraged. Right. So I think to myself, I would have been discouraged. Like, Oh man, we can't get our friend. To, you know, there's too many people here. Let's just head back. But these people were, they were determined, right? Yes. And they weren't just, they weren't discouraged and they were desperate to get their friend. Yes. Jesus. And they were creative. They were like, what can we do? There's other, there's a, there's a yes. roof. We'll yes. just dig, dig through the roof. And I just, when I think about, and the fact that Jesus saw their faith, mm -hmm. right? Like when they lowered the man down in front of Jesus, what did they say? He says, seeing their faith, the friend's faith, mm -hmm. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Like, it's just, yes. I think to myself, like, I know people in my life who need to know Jesus. And what am I doing? Am I yeah. praying? Am I, am I having opportunities to chat with them or yes. model Christ-like to them? Well, and I like what you said, how you said, like, um, they were determined yeah. and, and, you know, there were so many crowds around them. Like if you, if you can really like put yourself in this, in this story and yeah. in this picture, it's like, there are so many obstacles sometimes to getting people to faith, to sharing the gospel, so many obstacles to revealing Jesus. And they didn't let the obstacles discourage them. Right. You know, they didn't say, oh, well, it's full. I guess we'll just come back next time. Yeah, right. No, they were determined 
Yeah. They were determined despite the obstacles. They recognized what the obstacles were, and then they actually came up with a plan yeah. to overcome the obstacles. And it was kind of an out-of-the-box plan. Right. But isn't that how Jesus often works and right. how he calls us to think and operate? Yeah. It was such an out-of-the-box plan, and it took effort, yeah. and it took work, and it took teamwork. Mm -hmm. But they did it. Yeah. They did it, and they overcame that. They weren't that, so discouraged by the obstacles that they felt defeated. Right, they took a detour, and they said, we can do something else. And I like the fact that you just said the teamwork. You know, they worked together. Yeah. Sometimes, like, I feel like when we're able to pray for others, like, like if I, I have friends who are like, my friend, I want to see this person come to Jesus. Yeah. I'm honored to be able to pray because we're, we're, we're a family, right? We pray yes. together and it's just a wonderful thing to be able to rejoice and see when someone has come to faith that you're like, like that's, that's something yeah. that I'm praying for. That's and we can do so much more together as the body of Christ in yeah. team, in community. You know, yeah. they probably couldn't have hauled this guy all the way up to the roof to the second story, cut open, and they certainly couldn't have lowered him down one person. No, no it took a whole team. It took that community to say, we're in this together. We love this person enough that we have to get this person. We are going to work together to get this person in front of Jesus, yeah, at I the feet it. of Jesus. Uh, and the other thing that I noticed is, you know, you and, and the Pharisees kind of allude to this. You know, Jesus says, um, your sins are forgiven, yeah. right? And the Pharisees are like, wait a minute, holy God can forgive sins. Like, what does this guy think he's doing, yeah. right? And you and I would say, um, Jesus, the man can't walk. Like, it might not be a sin he wants. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you not think that maybe like forgive the sins later? Can we like, heal the guy? He wants to go to work and walk and be a part of the society. But when I read that, I realized our, our spiritual situation is more of a concern than our physical situation. Now that's not easy to take as a person. I'd rather be physically healed because it's what holds me back. But what Jesus sees is my spiritual situation. Yes. He's and actually that's God. the beauty. That's the beauty of the physical healing. Like I had written, I wrote down about that comment too, is that, you know, Jesus was basically making, and you've heard me say this before. He was, he was showing a spiritual principle and a spiritual yes. truth through a physical demonstration. So the physical demonstration of healing was there to prove the actual physical thing that took place. So he's like, you have a problem with me forgiving sins? Let me show you what I can do. So he brought about healing. He brought about wholeness. He brought about restoration. And they didn't believe him through the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus is like, let me show you what forgiveness of sins is all about. And he brought healing and he brought wholeness and he brought restoration to his physical body yeah. in order to demonstrate the spiritual principle through a physical demonstra yeah. and demonstration you know, of healing. All, yeah, and oftentimes, Becca, when we carry sin that we are like not bringing to the Lord, right? We're just like kind of pushing down. It affects us physically. Yes. So sin and worry, I just read in Proverbs, yes. that worry weighs a person down, right? Yep. And so there's a really big correlation between what goes on inside of us and what's happening on the outside of us, mm -hmm. right? And like, if we want to be healthy on the outside. We really need to be healthy on the inside. Yes. That's letting God like wipe clean mm -hmm. daily. Like what is, what do you need to see in me? That's, that's not pleasing to you. And I just yes. love the fact that he, he takes care of that first. And then he's mm -hmm. like, now I'm going to physically heal you. And, and you touched on the idea of the faith of the friends too. This was, oh. um, I remember early on in my faith journey, I was actually praying for one of my siblings um, who had really walked away from the Lord and was struggling with some things. And I remember I read this passage and I remember it was because of the faith of the friends that the Lord did something. And I, I just began going after yeah. prayer it pr in prayer for my sister at the time. And I prayed and I invited her to a Christian camp um, that I was serving at at the time. And, and I just remember like having so much faith. So I was like, Lord, I believe that you can do something like this. And, you know, she gave her life to the Lord mm -hmm. and um, her life has been changed ever since. And I look at that and I always think of that story of God's yeah. faithfulness um, because, because I was, I was so encouraged by this passage and that's what the word of God can do. It can, it doesn't answer every question that we might have, but it's here to encourage us and say, yeah. you know, work in team, yeah. you know, come together as a community, go after things in prayer, yeah. you know, Bring in faith your friends and believe that the Lord can minister to them, that the Lord can 
can do something in their life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I think it's such a such an encouraging and such a beautiful passage. And then we go on to the call of Levi, oh. the call of Matthew, the tax collector, right? So great. Yes. Yeah. So, so right. as you were reading, you know, as I was kind of reading some of these words, was there anything that stood out to you? Any verses or words or well, thoughts? I just love the picture that Jesus, here's Jesus, right? He calls the person and, and we've talked about the chosen. So like watching yes. that show, it really helps because I can have this visual picture of the, the other disciples probably thought, you know, hey, you know, we're kind of like-minded. We were fishermen. We were all like kind of you know, we, we do the same job. And then he calls this tax collector. Yeah. It's like, Jesus, what, what are you doing? doing that guy for him? He is like bad news. Right. And I just love that Jesus sees through like occupation through what the society sees. And he looks into the heart of Matthew and he says, I'm calling you let's go. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then what does he do? He doesn't just call Matthew. He doesn't stop there. Then he has a he has him have a banquet at his house with all the other tax collectors and all the other reputable sinners, right? And I just think to myself, this is where Jesus wants us. He wants us with the people who aren't all clean and, and put well together and, and whatever and feeling like they're good enough. He's like, I've called to come the, I've called, come to call those who are sick. Yes. Yeah. And you know what I noticed for the first time in this passage, Dina, how many times have we read? Oh, God. How many times right. have I read this? Year? I, we've taught videos. We've taught things yeah. on this chapter before. This morning, I got up early and I was studying this again and I saw something for the first time. This is what I love about the word of God. I love it. It's a lie. Oh my gosh. I could tell you this story was in Mark chapter two my whole life, right? This is what I saw this morning. Jesus called Matthew in front of the crowds. Oh, called, I never... Right? And it's, I, I mean, it was right there. I noticed that when yeah, I said in front of Jesus the crowds, was outside. Right large crowds came to him and he began to teach yeah. them. And as he walked, he saw him and said, come and follow me. Yeah. Yeah. He called him in front of all the people. So first there were crowds around Jesus. Yep. Listen, people followed Jesus because they knew what he was about. Yeah. Okay. They knew what he was for. He was for the underprivileged. He was for the desperate. He was for the broken. He was for the poor. He was for those who were considered outcasts in society. Yeah. And so they followed after him. Sometimes as Christians, I think we can be known more for what we're against, not mm -hmm. for what we're for. You know, if you ask the world, hey, what, do Christ what are Christians about? Well, well they, they say don't... they're about the call of Jesus. Right. They, and then they begin to recite the Sermon on the Mount and all of Jesus' teachings. Or will they say what we're really like picking against? Right. So that was very convicting, you know, like, do people really know what we're for? But then Jesus called Matthew, this outcast of society in front of everybody can you imagine like the the murmuring that must have happened in the crowds at that time like what i don't think he knows who this guy is right. and the it, fact that he wasn't ashamed to call him he wasn't like yes. he was around and we'll like we'll change his clothes and nobody will remember who he was like he's in like capernaum where everybody knows everybody and he's yeah. calling matthew and he's saying you come there's yeah. no shame in that he doesn't no. care no, and no. Jesus is so intentional. That's why when you when you read about the life of Jesus, that's why I love reading through the Gospels. Everything he does, it's not accidental. It's intentional. And he's calling Matthew in front of the crowds yeah. to make a declaration to everybody there that everybody can come and follow after that's me. Right. Yes, right. even the tax collector, yeah. even the most outcast person in society. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Jews didn't want him. Yeah. The Romans didn't really want anything to do with him. He was considered a traitor. He was considered a thief. And I'm calling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My kingdom's open yeah. for everybody. Right. And it's amazing. And the people like, I always think about Zacchaeus. Those who yes. like were knew that they were forgiven and set free. Yeah. They responded with such yeah. joy and gratitude and yeah. like obedience, right? I yes. mean, and those who were like, oh, well, thanks so much for forgiving me. Like, I don't really... Well, they're, they're, they weren't very moved because right. they, they didn't see that they need any change. And yes, he's like, I came to call people who want to be changed. Yes. And there was something I, about Jesus. There was something so intriguing about Jesus that they followed him. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like, ah, it's not really for me, Jesus. I'm right. not really sure I want to be associated with this. There was something so alluring so drawing about Jesus, about his character, about his yeah. presence. It was very, he was very controversial. Oh yeah. But there was something about him that was so drawing that even the tax collectors, even the prostitutes, yep. even the fishermen and some Pharisees, 
and some yeah. some of the religious elite yeah. from the highest of the high to the lowest of the low wanted to follow after mm-hmm. Jesus and they wanted to lean in and listen and it's just this extraordinary I think sometimes we can read the gospels and we just kind of like skim over some of this stuff because we know but when we lean into the gospel yeah. the, the advocate the spirit that says he said the spirit of truth that I will lead you into all truth that's the advocate the Holy yeah, Spirit right. that Jesus has sent with us right and when we lean into the gospels and say Lord would you teach me something new about yourself he begins to reveal parts of his character that are drawing us to him yeah. Jesus will draw us to himself yes and then he is wonderful we like christ so that we can then be that aroma yes. and we could be yes. the the sweet selling perfume that people are yes. drawn to absolutely and I think he's had a beautiful combination of love mm-hmm. and truth mm-hmm. right and honesty and like he he didn't like sugarcoat stuff no right? uh-uh. but he also wasn't like mean or or yeah. nasty when he had to say something in truth right yeah and i think that's that's what we want to aim for right yes. we want people who walk in truth and love well i think that would be a great place to to end dina maybe you could pray for us um, just it. in that thought i love that thought of like you even said like the uh the aroma yes. the aroma, Being the aroma of Christ. Of Christ. walking in truth yeah. and love. let's pray yes for yes Everything. yeah Lord, we just thank you so much for your word. We thank you that it's alive, Lord. I thank you that each and every day you want to make us more and more like Christ. Yeah. That is our desire. We want to be less and less so we can be more and more like you, Jesus. We want to be the sweet smelling perfume. Lord, there's a lot of nasty smells in our world right Mm -hmm. now. There's a lot of negative. There's a lot of just not so nice things that people are seeing and and experiencing. Lord, we want to be that sweet smelling perfume that is a breath of fresh air. Lord, we want to walk in truth and in love together. Lord, we want to love those around us, realizing, Lord, that we're all very, very similar. We're all Mm -hmm. sinners and we're all saved by grace, Lord. So help us to love those around us today and walk in truth and love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, Dina, and thanks, everybody. So make sure to tune in as we uh, next time, next video, as we explore the rest of Chapter 2 in Mark. Have an awesome day.